Hey guys, what is up? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our videos. Today is a very exciting day for me as a YouTuber. The wonderful people at FiFine Technology got in touch and they have sent us a microphone to take a look at. This is a USB mic, so it, it connects directly to your computer. I have not even opened it or really looked at it yet. So first of all, thank you guys so much for, uh, at, at FiFine for, for sending over this mic. I'm really excited to take a look at it. Full disclaimer, they did send it to me uh, for free. I am going to be able to keep the mic after the fact. It's not a super expensive mic, uh, 30, 40 bucks on Amazon, something like that, if I remember correctly. But this review will still be completely unbiased. My true and honest opinion, they are not compensating me to give a falsely positive review or anything like that. They did just send the mic over wanting our honest take on how it sounds, how it works, all that good stuff. So we're going to move the camera over, do an actual proper unboxing. Look at me being a real YouTuber and um, and take a look at the mic, take a look at some of the features and then try to get it installed on the uh, on the old studio PC and see how it sounds. OK, guys, so here we go. Our FiFine USB condenser mic. Let's go ahead and check out what all it comes with. Opening the box, you get a little quick start user's guide. Um, the exact model on this guy is the uh, K669, I believe, or maybe the 669B. Um, that might be the black version, um, but super handy little user's guide, it looks like. It explains, yeah, how to set up the software and set it as an audio device on your computer, all that good stuff. And then just a nice little uh, bookmarky card type thing here, thanking us for being a valued customer. That's very nice of them. So we have that. Then, somewhat unceremoniously, I suppose, we have the microphone itself. So let's see here. Now, one thing that is immediately jumping out at me as something I am not gonna like and probably harp on, this USB cable appears to be hardwired into the mic. That is not something I'm super thrilled about. Usually with cables like this, uh, because that is hardwired in there, if anything ever goes wrong, you're kind of hosed. Um, there's really not a whole lot you can do in terms of like if that ever shorts out or that connection ever goes bad, your whole mic is shot. So I can see the element in there, probably a pretty cheap um, diaphragm. Again, this mic is very, very inexpensive. I'll have to double check the price on it. Um, but I think it's 20 or $30, 30, 40, maybe something like that on Amazon. We also have this plastic hard mount. It doesn't look like it comes off or screws off or anything. Okay. Volume knob on board, which is kind of a nice feature. I'm also not seeing any kind of headphone output or anything like that, which typically with a USB mic like this, you would expect to see a headphone jack of some kind on it since it's functioning as both your audio interface and your microphone all in one. And again, because this cable is hardwired, you won't be able to connect this to any kind of normal speaker or interf interface or anything like this. This goes directly into your PC and then you set it up as the actual audio device in your software to record it and then that's pretty much it. So we'll see how all that goes. I know there can be issues sometimes with getting an output set when you're using something like this, so we will just have to wait and see. So there's that, and then it looks like the last thing that it comes with, nice little tripod. That's actually super, super handy. I will totally use that for a number of things. Um, but just a nice, easy little desk stand. Um, these legs are metal. This little thing's actually decently heavy, which is kind of impressive. Fold out a good amount, feels nice and sturdy. This, this uh, centerpiece is plastic. Um, same plastic as the mount, it looks like. There you go. There's our Fifine mic. So that's everything that comes in the box. Let's go ahead and move into the control room and see how it installs, how it sounds, all that good stuff. Okay, guys, so I have moved into the control room and we have our Fifine little adorable USB mic here running a screen cap. As you guys can see, I've got Studio One open, ready to open a new session and get this mic all set up. So I just wanted to kind of document the whole process. Um, I did look through their user guide and it is actually quite detailed and quite well written. It is not full of the, uh, you know, spelling errors and grammar errors and stuff that, that something like this might normally contain. It is pretty straightforward. Basically, it just says I'm using PC. 
So it says for PCs, you just plug it in, the driver will automatically install, and then we can set it as an audio input device. The one thing I'm a little concerned about that we'll have to see about is setting a separate output driver. We may have to switch over to Audacity or some other piece of software because I'm, I'm not sure if that's doable in Studio One, but uh, let's go ahead and find out what happens. I'm gonna disappear for a second, get it plugged into an open USB port on my computer and uh, take it from there. Okay, so boom, USB PNP audio device is set up and ready to go. So here we can see I've got a Scarlett 18i20 connected right now because my Antelope Orion is unfortunately having problems, but we can see that it is showing up here in our devices. So let's go ahead and open this up. Um, okay, so it is not showing up. Oh yes, you failed to open microphone USB. Mm. So uh, it did say specifically that what you want to do is make sure that it's set to 16-bit 48 as opposed to 44.1. So let me mess with a few settings here and see if we can get this working. Aha, so yeah, we are getting signal from it. I'm just adjusting the gain, the little volume knob on right on here. So check, 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 check. Hey, check, yeah. Okay, so we are getting signal. That is good news. What I'm gonna try to do is set it up as Windows to use. Yep, and it looks like it's set up how I want, so it's gonna use our focus right to play back and that to record. So let's just see what happens if we try to create a new blank session. No dice. Okay, let's do some troubleshooting here. Checking it out. Check. Oh, Ooh. there Here we go. go. Wow, that's, that's a lot, a lot of latency. Of latency. <laughs> Okay, so we are getting actual sound from it, uh, in Windows, at least. So that's a good thing. Oh, okay. Oh, goodness gracious. That does not sound very good. Robots. So what I am finding out, this is not super straightforward to set up in an actual proper DAW, which doesn't entirely surprise me. You know, again, the, the problem here is that because this is its own audio interface, it's USB. So there, you know, there's nothing analog. It's not like I'm connecting it to my interface and then recording it like a normal microphone. I have to set this up as a whole different software device in my system and then get that to talk to my output device, which right now, again, is the Focusrite Scarlett 18 i 20. They're just not talking to each other in Studio One. If I kept messing with it, I could probably get it to work, but we're not going to do that because um, it would take quite a while. So unfortunately, we have a mark against it so far. As far as I'm concerned, especially with a product like this that's really geared towards beginners, it should be incredibly easy to set up in a number of different ways. That's why I was really hoping that it would have an output jack on it. You know, if you think of a little bit higher quality USB microphones like this, like the Blue Yeti, for instance, um, it has an actual headphone jack on it. So you can at least put on a pair of headphones and hear yourself talk. I was able to get the audio working in Windows. So just going through like the Windows menus and stuff and, and messing with some settings. It also is locked to four, a 48 kilohertz sample rate, which is a little bit unusual. I normally run at 44.1, which is a little more standard than 48. So I would had to set Windows and the focus right and this thing to 48K. Also, it, does, it doesn't seem like it has a ton of gain when I was able to get some sound through Windows. So uh, I'm still not sure yet, but let's go ahead and open Audacity. Audacity is usually a little bit easier to configure with these kinds of things. So let's see if that helps. Okay, so it does look like we are getting sound in Audacity. However, we're not getting any output as near as I can tell. So it does record in Audacity, and it, Audacity did just open up and have it set up immediately. One thing I am curious about, though, is can we get software monitoring going? So I'm going to mute my speakers so we don't get any feedback. Okay, so now we have actual software monitoring going on in... Uh, I can't. I can't do that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, so you guys probably couldn't hear there, but the latency is atrocious. Three quarters of a second thereabout. Well, yeah, maybe not quite that much. Half a second, though. It's not doable. Here, let me just, I'll turn up my speakers so that you guys can hear how bad the latency is on this. Check, check, check. Check one, check two. one, two. So you can hear when I say it and then you hear it. That latency is really, really, really brutal. This is the problem is that Windows is not really designed as like pro audio architecture, you know, with any of this kind of stuff in mind. So, you know, with a quick rudimentary setup, 
That appears to be about as good as it's going to get. Let me at least do this. Um, I can record a few basic demos. I'll probably play some acoustic and then just do a bit of voiceover because just very cursorily, the, the sound quality actually seems like it's pretty good. We just have issues with getting the drivers set up as well as issues with latency when we're trying to monitor back. So let's go ahead. I'll do some voiceover. I'll do some guitar and you guys can at least hear how the mic sounds. Um, and then we'll talk about some of these issues a little bit more in detail in our little conclusion. All right, guys, so we've got the mic set up here with a little acoustic guitar and Audacity running in the background here. Um, so I'm just going to roll and we can hear how it sounds on acoustic. Okay, and now I have pulled it up and I'm just going to use it for some really, really simple voiceover so you guys can hear what it sounds like when I talk into it. The unfortunate thing in this situation is that I cannot hear what it sounds like. I can't monitor in real time because the latency is really, 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 really bad. So this is going to create a lot of problems just in terms of like if you're a musician and you're trying to maybe record a guitar part and then sing over it, you're not going to be able to hear yourself in the headphones while you're singing and you know, I'm not sure, but it's not going to line up necessarily very well. I would have to really test it out further. Maybe there is a way to go into some setting and, and reduce that latency, but I kind of doubt it because this thing has its own dedicated drivers. So I would tell you guys what I think of the sound quality right now, but I can't because I'm not listening to it. So I'm going to have to listen back to these files after the fact. I also have the gain cranked all the way on the microphone. The volume is absolutely as high as it'll go on the front of the mic, and I'm getting a moderate amount of signal into Audacity, but I'm pretty close, and I don't know if you can see the waveforms behind me, but I would expect to be seeing a lot higher gain um, from something like this with it cranked all the way up. Again, I think there is a gain control slider in Windows, but you know when you're working, I, you don't want to be clicking through all these menus and all this kind of stuff, so I'll just go ahead and take a listen to the file, and then we'll kind of do a little closing here in a second. Okay, guys, so there is kind of running this little Fifine USB mic through its paces. First of all, I want to say thank you again very much to the guys at Fifine for sending me this mic. I really, really appreciate it. It's always um, flattering to, you know, get sent stuff for free, basically, to check out. Um, I hope to do it many more times in the future. However, I have some concerns about this particular mic. Listening back to the audio files, it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, I am impressed with the sound quality. It's decently detailed. It's decently present. There's a bit of hiss in the background. Um, the signal and noise is not great. There is also, because the the grill, the mesh grill is really thin, I definitely had some problems, as you guys probably heard in the voiceover, with some plosives, some hard P's and B's and stuff that definitely clipped the diaphragm out a little bit and gave us some not-so-pleasant results. You know, audio quality is good. It's actually a lot better than than a lot of these cheaper mics, you know, like the new newer or whatever mic that I reviewed, which is just an absolute piece of junk. <laughs> Definitely better than that. So the failing is not in the audio quality. The failing with this mic for me is just kind of ease of use and ease of setup. I I think that there are situations where this mic would be a fine solution. Uh, for example, if you are doing like a podcast of some kind and you literally just need to record your yourself talking, you don't need monitoring of any kind where you can hear yourself as you are recording, you know, so, or, you know, you could definitely use it for music as well. But again, the big problem is just between the latency and how tricky it can be to set up this alongside an actual output device. It makes it really, really difficult to use for music because, between, you know, with that latency, you're never really going to be able to get things in time. You're going to have to be dragging stuff around. You're not going to be able to monitor or hear anything that you're recording while you're recording it. Um, and the setup, even for me, you know, I don't have a ton of experience with USB mics like this, so maybe I'm missing something. If I am, please let me know in the comments down below because I'm genuinely curious. Uh, but I know my way around audio software. I know my way around setting up audio devices in Windows. I've done a fair amount of it in my day uh, in dozens of different studios that I've built or helped set up or whatever. I know my way around this stuff and I could not get it to work in Studio One. It was having some kind of sample rate conflict or something. I don't know what was going on. I did get it to work in Audacity, but again, you can't monitor. The latency is really, really bad, so you can't listen to what you're recording as you're recording it. So singing along to something that you've already recorded, if you can do it without hearing yourself in the headphones, maybe put one ear out, that could work. But then you're going to have to start moving the track around so that it's in time because there's, 
you know, again, a good half a second of latency as you guys heard. Back to what I said at the beginning of the video, this cable really concerns me as well. If anything ever goes wrong with this cable, the whole microphone is shot. You're, you're just hosed. And it does not feel like a super high quality cable, unfortunately. It, it feels definitely like a, like a cheaper USB cable. So I could see if you move this thing around a lot, if you're just going to set it up and leave it in one place, that should be fine. But um, if you're going to be packing the, trying to pack this thing up and take it with you somewhere, use it uh, out on location or something like that, as soon as anything goes wrong with this cable, like I'm nervous even just holding it like this, you're done. The mic is effectively trash at that point because you're not going to be able to go in somehow and like solder this back together. There doesn't appear to be an easy way to, you know, there's Allen keys, I guess, but to take it apart and repair it at that point, you know, it's a, it's a cheap microphone anyways. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, it does list in the manual that the frequency, that the polar pattern rather is unidirectional. I'm assuming that means omni, uh, which is kind of cool. I suppose it doesn't look like an omni capsule to my eye. Usually on the capsules are, are a, a dual diaphragm design, but who knows? So yeah, in conclusion, kind of mixed. Again, the audio quality is surprisingly good. It does sound good. It's a decent sounding mic. And if it didn't have these latency issues, if it had like just an XLR jack, I would recommend it very, very highly. Or if it even, you know, had like a headphone jack on it so that you could at least direct monitor yourself as you're recording or, you know, be able to hear what's going on even that would make it a little bit better. But the fact that it's a hardwired USB cable, the fact that it doesn't have any kind of output, you kind of have to do some software wrangling to get it to function really correctly. Uh, I couldn't get it pulled up in a professional piece of software. So if you use an actual DAW like Logic or something like that, maybe you'll have better uh, luck than me. Maybe it works a little bit better for Mac OS users who work in Logic or something. I don't know, but I could not get it to work in Studio One after trying for a good 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I can't in good conscience recommend this for music production. If you, again, are doing a podcast or maybe you are a Let's Player or something for YouTube and you just need basic, good quality sound in, you don't need to monitor it, you don't need to overdub anything, I think it could work really well for that. Um, and you would get very, very good sound quality. But in terms of being able to monitor, being able to overdub, it just doesn't seem to be a very elegant solution. And then again, this issue with the cable. Overall, mixed opinion, I suppose. If it sounds like something that would work for you, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, it is cool. It feels decently well built, besides the cable. And it does sound really good. So there is that. But, you know, again, for, for real music stuff, I would probably look elsewhere, you know, into getting a dedicated actual proper interface and then a microphone that you can just connect with a normal mic cable. Um, but what do you guys think? I know this is probably a pretty long video at this point, so I appreciate you sticking with me. Hopefully you found it interesting. Again, you know, I've said this a few times, but seriously, thank you guys so much to, to, to the folks at Five Fine for sending this over. I do really appreciate it. And hopefully my feedback can help you guys in further product development and all that stuff. I would make it you know, the USB able to be unplugged, I would give it a dedicated output thing, or I would release a version of this mic that just had strictly an XLR cable. I think those would all be things that would be good for you guys to consider in the future with your products, but uh, that is just me. Whatever you guys may think, if you've used this or other USB mics that you really enjoy, um, please leave those thoughts in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you guys going back and forth, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that'll do it for this one. Again, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to make sure you're updated when we release new videos. And uh, yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.